Hey, so today I want to talk about the part one of Fear Street 1994. This film was released on Netflix in July 2nd and I watched it the next day. This is part of a trilogy of films that are going to be released every Friday in three weeks. So it's basically two other films. The part two is, I believe, set in 1978 and the part three is uh, set in 1666. So if the, even if the timeline is a bit wonky, it actually ties in through the whole story. Now Fear Street is based on books by Arl Stein and I tried to research some of it and it seems like there's a lot of books and the story is kind of scattered and all over the place. So I'm not entirely sure how they actually got the inspiration but now they are going in this direction and for me it seems fine now when i was planning to watch the film there was actually a lot of positive buzz buzz on the internet so i guess that could have also kind of swayed my uh, opinion but rather than that i want to say that i very enjoyed this film this is a very enjoyed slasher film as i think that was internet and imdb is actually kind of calling it but this is more like a supernatural horror action film. I would say that the horror parts are minimal. It's not horror horror in a sense that like, you know, it's going to get you scared or going to get jumping or things are going to get tense. This film has a sort of a kind of a, you know, tongue in cheek way about it. It actually knows what it wants to do. There were homages, the idea and the kind of set pieces are actually reflective of the 1990s. And in that way, this feels just right up Netflix's alley, even though these films were not supposed to be uh, released on Netflix, Netflix actually bought it. Now the director, I believe her, her name is called Lei Jainek, and she's gonna direct all three of this. And if this is the start of the trilogy, officially colored me intrigued and interested. Now after watching this, I certainly plan on watching the other two on the following two Fridays and hopefully that you'll like it and I kind of feel like that this film goes in a way that's not tense but enjoyable you know the characters seem to be having fun the story is kind of chill there are some menace but the menace is never overbearing and everybody's sort of having fun and I guess that's why the we as an audience kind of feel like fun. This is the perfect type of film that should go on streaming services. I'm not saying that this wouldn't have been fun seeing in the big screen, but seeing in a small screen on a weekend, it certainly helps to understand like what's going on and in what ways you can kind of, you know, watch a horror film in 2021 that's not been done to death and just puts on a few fresh spin. But I would say that the action is okay, it's nothing breakthrough. That's what I'm say, trying to say. Nothing about this film is exceptional, great, or the best. Some of things are straight up mediocre. Some of them things are above average. Some things may, might just be below average, but it's just the way this whole film is packaged. And I think the uh, set pieces and the cinematography, all of this come put together, actually makes this a tremendous watch. And I highly recommend if you have Netflix, you should definitely watch this film for one and a half hours it's definitely worth your time and i think if you are even a slight kind of uh, horror fan or an action movie fan not like action action but like you know mild action kind of fan i think you'll like it it's a fun film and i give this three and a half and you should definitely give this one a try and stay tuned for the other two because i think those could be interesting if this film is any indication